following program is a presentation of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio in iTunes. It's time for the show that breaks down the options market. From unusual activity alerts to market updates and trading strategies. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block. With your host, Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com. And co-hosts, Mike Tussaw from KnowYourOptionsInc.com and Mark Sebastian from OptionPit.com. The Option Block is brought to you by Options Express. Don't spend time worrying about your broker. At Options Express, security, stability, and account protection are the most important responsibilities to our customers. Secure account access, enhanced financial protection, entrusted with over $7 billion in customer assets, established financial stability. Options Express lets you trade with confidence. Stocks, options, and futures all in one account. Trade with a specialist. Visit optionsexpress.com slash OX radio to open your free account. Options Express is a member of FINRA, SIPC, and NFA. Welcome back to the Option Block, and I hope our listeners enjoyed our long hiatus. It's been a week since we've been on, but we took a nice extended holiday weekend, I think which was good for all of us here on the panel. My name is Mark Longo, and I am your host for this jolly good time in the world of options and i am joined by our usual cast of characters starting off with mr heavy breather tim navabi himself how you doing mr navabi from options express i'm doing pretty good mark thank you very much how are you you're like being on the show with darth vader sometimes that's not tim really? heavy breathing that's the woman he's got with him <laughs> <laughs> the lady killer <laughs> She's nowhere near the microphone. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh. We're going to get the explicit rating for this show. <laughs> All right. And joining us also is the man from the mountains, good old Uncle Mike Tusaw from Know Your Options, Inc. Uncle Mike, how was your holiday weekend? Oh, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. Got to go out, play, hang out with the kids, and just good time all around. Did you taking any monster trucks? Didn't do any monster trucks, but we went into the um, the extra high, fo- took the boat out into the extra high Fox River. And uh, normally the sandbar that we hang out at that's up to around waist level was around neck level. And current was the fastest I've ever seen it. So I'm thankful I didn't get swept away down into the Mississippi. So you took out the 200 foot Tucson family yacht for the weekend? No, we took out the big boat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I brought the family out, went to like an, uh, out, out in St. Charles, we have what we call like our little redneck, redneck yacht club where we, there's a little sandbar where all the people from the neighborhood hang out, park the boats and, uh, hang out. It's a good time. I'm surprised you can get the family chef to work on the boat on a holiday weekend. That's, <laughs> that's some power you have there, Mr. Tusa. Hey, it's, it's, it's the kind of boat that if it starts, it works. And that's what makes it a good time when, when it starts. What's that old saying? They say the two best days in a boat owner's life are the day you buy it and the day you sell it. I can definitely relate to that. (laughs) Anyone want to buy a boat? (laughs) And then rounding out our all-star panel today is none other than the greasy meatball himself, Mark Seabass Sebastian from OptionPit.com. Mr. Sebastian, I'm afraid to ask, but how was your holiday weekend, sir? You know, it was really, really fun. Um, This (laughs) is... I think probably, well, tiring, but fun. I think for the first time since I, I, uh, I don't know, I was maybe 25, I had uh, beer three out of three nights, three, uh, three times in four days. It's pretty awesome. And, uh, you know, it just ended up being an all in all good time. So, uh, so you were an honorary Irishman for the weekend then? <laughs> I, yeah, well, yeah, I was an honorary college kid for the weekend. <laughs> Yeah, those kind of things tend to fall by the wayside when you got the little yeah, ones no. rampaging around everywhere you go. 
No, absolutely. And and that was uh that is obviously the way it normally is. It just so happened that uh this time it uh things worked out pretty well. I found that it's hard to chase them when you have had a few beverages. <laughs> agreed. Agreed. Well, that's what that's why you need you need somebody that agrees not to not to, you know, imbibe in uh imbibe in libations, but uh you know, and if they don't agree, the key is to imbibe first. <laughs> <laughs> you don't just put one of those leashes on them and like, you know, on the like Oh, absolutely. The, well, the stake, stake in the ground and kind of. <laughs> yeah, well, we do that too, but. Exactly. It's very humane over at the Sebastian household. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, it's great. Well, we what we do is we actually take a, a laundry basket and turn it upside down. <laughs> and then Mark Paint play in there. <laughs> All right. And with our holiday weekends complete, we're going to. How was yours, Mike? Sorry about that. And Mark, sorry oh, about mine, that. Oh, mine, actually. Yeah, I don't, I, yeah, don't usually, do? I don't usually segue into mine. Uh, no. But um, yeah, yeah, we had fun, actually. We went out on the south side. And that's why I joked about the honorary Irishman, because we went to the Irish Fest, and my little man uh, discovered bumper cars for the first time, which uh, if you haven't seen a two-and-a-half-year-old laughing maniacally as we ram into car after car, then uh, <laughs> it's, it's a pretty funny sight. So yeah, he discovered the joy of bumper cars, and his life will never be the same. And with that, we're going to roll right into, or perhaps bump right into, the trading block. The trading block. And welcome to the trading block. As our listeners may be aware, it was a wee bit of a slower day than yesterday. The S&P closed down a whopping one and a half handles. The Dow down 41. NASDAQ up for bucking the trend. And the VIX cash down 0.19 to 18.11. So yeah, not exactly the wild free-for-all that it was yesterday. Mr. Tussaw, what was the BBI for yesterday? Oh, yesterday's not a days like yesterday aren't that big of a deal just because <clears throat> we just have the put in place and just kind of shrug our shoulders and say, all right, uh, it's the the BBI tends to increase when you have it go up a lot in the morning, down a lot in the afternoon, and then just continually uh, increasing the BBI into the night when watching the futures. You know, in the in our in our bullish strategies, obviously it wasn't a positive day, but nonetheless, it wasn't uh, losses were kept to a pretty tight minimum. And of course, listeners, it was a broad sell-off yesterday. We believe the Dow closed down around 280 points. One of the larger sell-offs we've seen for a little while on a lot of news, come, a lot of negative economic numbers here in the States and continued negative economic sentiment on what's going on over in Europe. Of course, today we saw some potential rumblings from Moody's that they might be more inclined to downgrade our debt here if indeed we don't come up with some way to adjust our debt ceiling. So that seemed to bring the markets down a little bit today. But overall, it was a relatively quiet day. Mr. Tusa, how are your, how are your commodities faring today? Oh, well, you know, just a, a, what was ironic about yesterday, actually, today, nothing too ironic anyway. It was just kind of a not too interesting a day. But what was ironic about yesterday, gold was going up as silver was coming down a little bit. So, um, you know, and looking at today, oil's up a little bit today. Um Gold and silver are down a little bit. Uh, nothing too uh, dramatic today. Uh, one thing that we did have, not or probably since the last time we've spoken, silver's pulled back a little bit from its its recent rally. So we've actually tightened up our put a little bit, and so it, it worked out. I just kind of like what, uh, alluding to what old Seabass the Meatball Sandwich had said last w week, hedges are useless unless you do something with them. And you got to be nimble when doing things when you're looking at hedges. So just wanted to say kudos to Seabass for saying the right stuff. Well, thank you. Thank you. Don't let me break up this love fest between the two of you, by all means. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> it's not awkward at all. <laughs> no, no. And of course, there was, well, not, not a heck of a lot of action going on in the S&P or in the VIX today. But Mr. Sebastian, you had a few tidbits that caught your eye. Yeah, there, you know, there's some it, it more yesterday than today. You know, we we uh, I, I we've had a lot of people kind of talking about the disconnect between VIX and XPX and SPX. And uh, something interesting, Mark, we sold off 30 handles yesterday, right? Uh, 
without without anybody cheating, Tim, you can guess on this, okay? Mm-hmm. What was what was the net amount of premium bought yesterday as we were selling off thirty handles? Net amount of premium bought in the S? In the S S and P five hundred. No cheating. I would say very little. Okay. That's my answer. You're talking across like SPY and SPX and everything? Uh, just SPX. And what do you think the and what was the net delta bought or sold, if you had to guess? I'm gonna guess net short about three hundred thousand deltas and net premium, that's a tough one with uh, I'd say fifty million. All right. They sold a hundred million dollars worth of premium yesterday. So wow. kind of a trick question. I was close in the wrong direction. <laughs> nice yeah, too. No, no. But that was my point. You would have guessed, okay, maybe nobody did much, or maybe we had some people buying puts. But paper put on, uh, paper got net long about, I want to say, 3 million deltas yesterday in SPX. And actually, let me double, let me give you the exact stat right now. Um, and they sold, Yeah, yeah this was shocking to me. Paper bought three million deltas yesterday, and sold a hundred and one million dollars worth of premium. Okay, so they net bought two point two million deltas in puts, and sold one hundred and thirty two million dollars worth of put premium yesterday. So people keep saying, "Well, what's going on with the VIX?" Well, every single sell-off, we are seeing people on load put premium and we saw it again yesterday and uh you know if you look back at a few charts here you know if i pull i'm not a chartist but i do i do like to kind of just briefly look at patterns on all of these big huge sell-off days we've had a really nice moderate bounce the following day okay over the last six months you know we had a nice uh, Sands, I guess, end of February, we had a couple of days before we got a bounce. And then we had a nice big sell-off in March that bounced. And every other one has been kind of getting a bounce. I mean, we just saw no dead cat bounce today. Um, if you look at where everybody was selling puts yesterday, it was the July 1300s and July kind of 1250 level. Um, I think that if we break 1300 and that level and we, and we don't bounce off of there, it is a, going to be an ugly ride down. Um, there's going to be a race to, uh, it'll be interesting. We'll be down like 10 handles, you know, we'll go from 1295 to 1280 something and the VIX will be up two or three points. Whereas yesterday we dropped 30 handles and the VIX was up three points. So I think there's a hidden vol pop uh, somewhere right right below 1300 right around now. Now, Mr. Tussaud, you're probably more of the chartist of the bunch than the rest of us. What are your supports and resistances telling you for those levels in the S&P? Well, not so much the support and resistance. What we're looking at in the S&P, but I think 1300 is a key number. Uh, one thing that whenever you have like the even numbers like that, it's just kind of like a mental resistance. Yeah, the and, even numbers are uh, always huge, yeah. Right. So I think that's more of what I'm – uh, looking at in that regard. But uh, to give you an idea in terms of the SPX, you can do 1300 is also a key number in that just we we bounced off of it in the middle of April. Uh, we we kind of had a little bit of support there towards the end of February. We went through it in March. So 1300, I would definitely go along with Mark in that from the technical standpoint, it is somewhat of a key number right now. Well, we're not hovering too far from it. We closed today at nearly 13.13, 13.12.94. So we are uh, dancing with the devil in that regard. If we close below 1,300 going into the weekend, that might be an well, interesting, and interesting, interesting level. I know we're going to get to this around the block, but what, what, what are we going to be doing tomorrow if the number is bad? Or at this point, for those that are listening to it, it will be now that the number is bad. Yeah, now what are the we number has come out. Yeah, I mean, what does it look like if the number is, uh, you know, what is what do we look like tomorrow if the number misses, if the unemployment is for for those wondering? That's what's surprising me with all of these 
questions left unanswered and all of these issues in the air that, you know, we still are seeing net sellers and puts out in the S&P. And obviously the people are taking some profits off the table from recent downturns, but still you'd think that they would continue to bid up this skew to astronomic proportions. And we're not, we're not seeing that to those significant degrees, which is surprising. I agree. And so, yeah, I mean, we talked about that in some of our other shows there's a time when you want some downside. I would think this would be it. And yet we're not seeing, you know, the enormous institutions just gobbling up that downside the way you might expect, given everything else that's been unfolding in the market over the past week or two. All right. And that's going to do it for the old trading block. And now we'll roll right into the old odd block. Welcome to the Odd Block. This is the segment of the show where we discuss the interesting and or the unusual options activity that is lighting up the tape today. And we got some some interesting ones. It wasn't exactly a, a banner day for unusual activity. But we're going to start things off with BBT, BB and T Corp. Excuse me, ticker symbol BBT. This is a Winston-Salem, North Carolina regional bank. And they close at $26.21, up $0.26. Cents. So this is a name that does about 6,000 contracts a day. They did over 24,000 today. The bulk of it was in a flurry of call buying that we saw on the June 27s today. In a, a very quick span, about 10 minutes, we saw over 7,000 of those June 27s going up today with a total of 8,400 on the day, about 80% lifting offers on these uh, calls, picking them up for an average of about 25 cents. And like I said, this is a name that does less than that amount of call volume in a single day. So that, that one series of trades alone was well more than the ADV in this name that we see. We need these guys to rise about 4% for, you know, for this trade to break even over the next 11 trading days. And we've seen about Overall today, we saw about 17,000 calls go up versus 2,000 puts today. So a heavy call to put ratio. And this is the name that's seen some selling pressure given what's been going on in the financial realm lately. It tested a 200-day moving average recently for the second time after that sell-off. So his name's had some selling pressure, and we're seeing people thinking maybe that this is going to be a inflection point for this name, and it might bounce back off this 26 level that's hovering at right now. Of course, they have some uh, some conferences coming up in, in June, but there are no earnings or any other significant events that would be potentially driving this name. So some size activity speculating on a near-term increase in good old BBT. And this is, of course, that we did 8,500 roughly today on the June 27th as a strike that has about 4,300 contracts and in open interest. So you saw some interesting opening activity in BB and T. And then we're going to move on to Brocade, ticker symbol uh. BRCD. They closed today at $7.00. And 11 cents up about 44 cents or six and a half percent. We've seen some rumors lately in this one that Dell is going to make a bid for brocade. After we saw some analysts noting that Dell has hit some debt levels of about three and a half billion, which would be about enough to cover an acquisition of brocade if they wanted to go that way. So, not surprisingly, we're seeing some bullish activity out in brocade as a result with the bulk of this activity. Well, today, let's, let's break down the numbers first before we get into it. This is the name that does about 11,000 contracts a day. They did over 140,000 today. Ooh. So serious, serious numbers lighten up the tape. We saw an, a massive opening trade coming in on July 6 puts, and these seem to be the one of the options of the day out here in Brocade, or one big sweep, we saw about 11,500 of these puts going up. A total of nearly 30,000 went up on yeah. a day. So a serious amount of opening paper thinking that this name has essentially working size limit orders in Brocade down below the six handle in July, thinking that there's not much downside or immediate near-term downside to Brocade if this Dell deal does indeed come to pass. And of course, we saw commensurate activity on the upside with yeah. 55,000 of the July 8 calls 
going right. up, a bulk of them going up for around 20 cents earlier in the day, 25,000 of them going up at one clip at one point. So serious activity going up right now today. Serious yeah. bullish activity in brocade. People obviously thinking this Dell bit is for real. Yeah, it seems like a decent uh, decent uh, risk reversal play kind of, you know. I think I said July, but those were actually, I think, the Junes that went up. No, it was for July. July went up 55,000 times, the Junes that went up about 6,000 times for 20 cents. So Julys were going up yeah. more in like the July 40 up, cent uh, range. Yeah. About 38 cents. Yeah, yeah, around the 40 cent range. No, yeah. I, I, that's a decent play. Uh, you know, the I think the best play, if, if I got, if twist my arm, I'd rather own the July, the Jan 6, uh, Jan 7.5 risky for 30 cents than the july 6 july 8 for 25 cents that that'd be the trade i i think the the better trade there is the jan tell you the truth so that'd be where i'd be heading you know taking leg leg into that for around uh 40 cents the uh the jan one if you if you wanted to and that that wouldn't be yeah i I think you could have done i think you could done it for for 35 if you tried I don't think either of these are particularly bad. Obviously, the July one, more focus on this deal being done near term. Well, the Jan actually does better if the deal gets done, right? I haven't heard prices being bandied about for what what people are expecting, but obviously people are expecting north of eight. Considering the stock's trading around seven right now, I think people are expecting right, well right. north of eight for this. For the well, deal if they're looking to pay three and a half billion, they don't have a lot more wiggle room because right now the market cap's three point one. So there you go. They then. Could, Yeah, so let's see. How much could that stock actually rally? Yeah, I mean, you could see this thing rally, yeah, another 12% or something like that. Um, So, I I don't know. I think $8 might be the price. You know, that— Yeah, 12%, that would would put it in the $8 range. Yeah, I don't know I would buy. I don't know that I— I don't don't know if I want the 8s at that point. Yeah. Does anybody really want to own Brocade? When was the last time Brocade was over $8? Two-year high on this stock— is October of 2009. So, you know, and since then, this thing has been, every earnings, this thing just looks terrible. So, given that level, looking at the $8 price target, then obviously you want to go with the seven half strangled as opposed to the eight, or yeah, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, risk I, reversal. I don't know that I would, let's just put it this way I wouldn't buy the nines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no interest in the nines here. But yeah, interesting. And I like the positioning of a risk reversal. I think that's a good way to play this. If you are looking at playing in brocade, I think some of these risk reversals are a uh, are a good way to go. Uh, you know what? Hey, Mark, here's another interesting. What about the, like, the July 8, 9, 10 Christmas tree, where you buy the July 8, sell the 9, sell the 10s? It keeps you clean up to about uh, up to about $11. Not a bad. Th- that might be an interesting little spread. I think you're gonna say you're gonna say the call stupid at first because we have two songs. Now, <laughs> now, I was actually initially thinking the That's one how you by play two. It. I was actually initially thinking the one by two, but uh, but uh, no, I like the uh, I think I like the uh, I think I like the, the call tree better. I like that extra buck out of there. Yeah, a lot of interesting ways to play this, depending on if this deal goes through. And of course, if you go on the risk reversal side and the deal doesn't go through. Worst case, if you go over some of these trades, you're owning the stock below six, which is not a bad level for this uh, this name. And that's what a lot of these people are putting on these sides. Risk reversals are obviously thinking they get some good cheap upside, and if it hits to the downside, they get a decent level on the stock. So not a bad trade. And we're going to close things up today with a review of some activity we saw going up in the last few days in Nokia. Uh, ticker symbol NOK, of course, they closed at $6.57 today, down 12 cents, or nearly 2%. And this is just a bunch of price cuts and analyst downgrades have been nailing this stock for the past few weeks. It's it's had a pretty bad run from about 95 all the way down to the mid-sixes now, so not exactly the time to be a long bunch of Nokia And not surprisingly, I think it was Tuesday, we saw a lot of activity where investors were selling puts, closing out some winning positions. But then today, we or actually yesterday, I'm sorry, this is activity from yesterday, we actually saw a reversal of that trend and a lot of opening activity. But uh, (laughs) we saw a lot of opening activity. And listeners, again, this is why you need to be on the live audience because uh, you miss all this gold that goes in in between the edit the parts that we edit oh yeah <laughs> the that gold was Jewish. The, the deeply offensive gold <laughs> and of course we saw a lot of opening activity on the june and july seven calls 
with about 3,000 contracts going up on both of those and 65% of the trading lifting offers on those calls. So people expecting a, uh, a near-term turnaround for Nokia after just a series of negative <laughs> negative announcements and negative developments for that name. Yesterday, the activity leaned heavily toward the calls, actually, with about 31,000 calls going up versus 10,000 puts. There were a three-to-one call-to-put ratio on Nokia yesterday. Obviously, a lot of people lighting up the tape thinking that the near-term sell-off has been overdone. Tim, any of you guys watch uh, Nokia at all? Um, Nokia, no. I haven't, you know, placed any orders for it um, in quite some time. Um, I know that, you know, the news keeps flashing up on the screen, and we always think that we'd be getting something uh, on Nokia, but uh, but nothing at all. When was the last time Nokia was relevant? <laughs> uh, about a month and a half ago when they made that big deal with Microsoft. That yeah, was, that was the last time they were really putting up a lot of numbers and making a lot of news to merit interest from options traders and be you know worthy of some consideration. Right. Since then they've they pretty much they sold off really hard. Looks like in February they were trading uh, eleven half and now they're almost down you know about forty percent since then. So yeah, not exactly a, a bullish run for Nokia even with this Microsoft investment notwithstanding. We had traded some strangles out there going into the Microsoft announcement. And they ended up working out pretty well, but since then we've just washed our hands of this one as it's just taken a tear to the downside. I don't know how I feel about these upside calls right now. I'm, I'm not feeling too bearish on, uh, or too bullish on Nokia pulling back anytime soon. Mm -mm. Ugly. And that's going to do it for the old odd block. And we're going to roll right into the Tim Navabi block, a.k.a. The Express Enough. <laughs> the Express Block, brought to you by Options Express. Options Express lets you trade where and when you want for every level of trading. From advanced charting, free daily trading ideas, and free educational resources, Options Express is the online broker for all traders. Best of all, Options Express allows you to trade stocks, options, and futures all in a single account on powerful yet easy-to-use trading platforms, including mobile devices. Visit optionsexpress.com slash OX radio for your free account. Options Express is a member of FINRA, SIPC, and NFA. And welcome to the Express Block. This is the part of the show where Tim Navabi regales us with his wisdom. Mr. Navabi, what do you have in store for us today, sir? Well, um, <clears throat> what's in store for today? I'm trying to think of a good way to phrase this here. Um, I hope... You know, if someone, you know, didn't look at the action today and said, OK, you know, uh, based on today's trading, here's what I see taking place and I'm ready to take my position because, uh, <laughs> you know, with the news coming out tomorrow um, and sort of with where some of these markets are sitting, it sort of seems like you know, it would be the wrong time to do that. Um, I mean, you may be wanting to set up for some longer term trades, um, you know, based on any sort of short term action. Um, but we're all sort of sitting at these key levels right here in a, in a couple of, you know, different commodities and markets. Um, so it's really sort of a wait and wait and see thing. Um, and in general, you know, we're really kind of slow, um, you know, after today's sort of, you know, uh, move down, um, not much action at all. Um, a couple of things that, you know, we're moving today on the commodity markets, um, you know, natural gas. Uh, natural gas was a big, big mover. It looks like um, kind of broke its, you know, highs that it made back in late April, early May. Um, so, you know, natural gas 478 uh, is, is where we were. Uh, that's the quote that I've got on it right now. I'm not sure if that's looking at yeah, that's probably looking at quote right now anyways. Um, so natural gas was the big mover. Um, and then you know we also had a, a breakout somewhat in the euro. Um, the euro was up about you know over one percent. Um, so that broke uh, you know s sort of the 144 uh, level. Um, and th those were really the, the two markets that I think attracted the most attention. Um, some of the other markets that people were trading today at Options Express, let me, but let me give you some more prices here real quick as far as, you know, you know, what were some of the movers? Um, 
coffee was up, cotton was up, uh, heating oil, soybeans, wheat. Uh, a lot of the agriculture markets were up. Um, you know, yeah, gold and silver, you know, they're all sort of just kind of hanging out here, um, trying to find some direction, you know, based upon any kind of news or, uh, you know, policy direction key idea if, if they can find one. Um, since yesterday was such, it was probably the more the more active of the two days. What was anything mm-hmm. sticks out in your mind from yesterday's flurry of activity? A lot of uh, a lot of particular calls in any one name yesterday. Yeah, I know. Surprisingly, no, not at all. Um, you know, people that you know, I didn't see too many people rushing in to buy puts. I didn't see too many people rushing in to buy calls. You know, I mean. It's, like people were, you know, somewhat surprised. All of a sudden, the market started to break it down, um, you know. But they weren't trading off of anything. Maybe they were just kind of liquidating some of their positions, getting stopped out. Um, but that's about it. So it's it's very it's kind of strange these days. Um, you know, I think people, you know, were sort of looking for that, you know, sell in May. Um, that didn't seem to pan out too well. You know, so I think people really just have a lot of questions in their mind, um, and they're sort of waiting for, you know, one one direction or another um, on this market to sort of start moving. But but really, you know, no trades stick out. Um, nothing that I've seen very unusual. Um, I mean, oh, let's take a look. I finally got it up here. As far as what's been, you know, traded most at Options Express, you know, SPY, SPX, SLV, Apple, RUT, Netflix, the Q's, uh, VIX, Gold. So, you know, <laughs> nothing unusual. And, and and really, that's about it. So, sorry I don't have much for you here. All but, the usual suspects then in the old Express yeah. block today, huh, Tim? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry I don't have too much. It's just, I mean, we're quiet. It's okay, um, buddy. Kind of slow. That's know? it, sir. Your uh, I, your I guest pass. I something. Your guest yeah. pass on the show is revoked, sir. There. <laughs> no, I actually got a question for you, Tim. How, how are things going with the new Forex at Options Express? Are, is there a lot of interest in that? Uh, the interest is coming along. It's, um, it, it is it's getting there. There wasn't um, a big rush uh, of people to start trading Forex. Not sure why. Um, you know, it, it seemed that people were always asking about it, asking about it, you know, and, and you know, now we have a, um, you know, a beta platform and, you know, we're inviting some people to come test it with us. Um, and we're getting some people, uh, they are joining up. Um, but, uh, but, but, not not like the big rush I think that um, seemed to be there um, maybe over the last year. Gotcha, gotcha. So, how about you? Have you done? Have you had any interest of anyone wanting to trade forex or? Not the spot per se. Uh, typically, uh-huh. what we're doing, we usually use the currency options either at the ice or the filex. Typically, yeah. the ice. And whenever sure. we have. Um, whenever we do uh, any type of currency position, just because of the fact that uh, it's something that it's, it's a pretty easy product to trade. Mm-hmm. And you know, in terms of the Forex, I don't have any moral issues with it. I just, I'd like mm-hmm. to learn it a little bit more first. Cause I, I sure. don't have any problem playing currencies. It just, I'm an option guy and that's uh, <laughs> typically what I feel more comfortable with. I was going to ask you about both those products because those seem to be the, you know, an obviously easy way to go as opposed to having to dive into the mess that can be the currency markets. I mean, uh, they're interesting products, you know, obviously their ISE is a big putting a big push on our site right now for their currency products because they do offer the security element in terms of your customers can put them in a securities account, they don't have to open up a futures account, so there's a little bit more of an ease of use perspective there. And yet these products get little love, you know, they get no, I mean, I was talking to someone down at the OIC conference a few weeks ago, and this is someone who should know better from a very large, well-known financial publication. I won't say which one. He was asking me, it's too bad there's no exchange traded credible products for retail to play in the FX world. And I just looked at him and I said, well, you know, what are you what? talking about? So, and I mentioned a couple of these off the top of my head and he had no idea what I was talking about. So these products, despite being around for a while and offering an interesting alternative, don't get a lot of traction. Do you guys push these at all, Tim? 
Um, we don't push them, but, you know, we have a couple of, um, I'm not sure if it's a couple, but, you know, I, I get a lot of orders from uh, a subscription service um, that does use these products, um, and specifically the world currency options um, at the Philex. Um, you know, I'll be honest, I really like them. I mean, I, I have not had one problem with a currency option on the Philex ever. I mean, y you know, the, they're just very nice products to trade. And and I think they're kind of rare. To, I mean, it's rare to even say that, you know. But um, I, I I just think they're they're a really good product. I mean, what about you? Have you had experience with them or? Well, I mean, when, when I was at Options Express, I did a lot of traveling with Steve Meisinger over at the Ice, and uh, at the time, Al Brinkman was at the the Philadelphia Exchange, and uh, a lot of times we did joint events uh, with both exchanges just to kind of give the the OX clientele, a, a balanced view of both of the products. And they really took, from what I remember of it, they, the, they really took off hard. I mean, they, they really uh, got a lot of interest right away, but I just had, I just made a trade on um, one the other day uh, at my all time favorite ticker symbol for the yen with, at the ice, yuck, Y U K. And <laughs> it's not, there's Look, it's there's not a lot of volume and open interest at this time. Yeah, that's what's killing them. Is that you know they're interesting and and they're theoretically appealing, but there's just no paper out there. So their markets are wide and liquidity is an issue. And that's because, like yeah. I said, I don't for some reason they're just not getting the word out enough about these products. And they, I've told them a number of times they need to step it up because these are interesting products that there is a need for in the retail space, and they just don't know they exist. I found yeah, that the uh, the options traded on the Philex, the world currency options, um, just seem to trade easier, better, nicer. More, they are more liquid right now. You know, than the ones on the ICE. Um, you know, the ICE currencies that I trade mostly are, you know, I like the underlying, the FXE, the FXA, stuff like that. Um but, you know, as far as if someone says, hey, I need an option and, you know, which one should I go with? I mean, I, I go right to the world currency options. I've never had anyone complain about them. You know, they're just they're nice products. Yeah, the, I mean, the, they're they're decent. Uh, to tell you the truth, I like the structure of the ice ones better. I like that they have both sides of it better, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, which is kind of a cool thing. So um, but you can like you can go U.S us to japan or japan to us mm -hmm. you can either side of it which is kind of a neat thing so mm -hmm. i i actually like it all right then and with that we'll close out the express block slash the world currency slash fx options block and we'll roll right into the old listener mail block listener mail listener mail listeners right in right in right in And welcome to the listener mail block. We have a couple of interesting questions coming in from the old Options Insider Forum this week. And of course, if you'd like to pose your own questions for the panel here, then surf on over to the optionsinsider.com and then scroll on down to the listener questions forum for the option block. And you can post them there. You can also send them in via Twitter and email. And a lot of you have done that as well. And a, f a few hardy souls have dared the voicemail box as well. So maybe we'll have to play a few of those down the road a little bit but we're gonna kick things off with a uh, a post from our forum by a, a user who goes by the handle options guy and he says why can't i stream option block on the ox mobile app that's the title of his thread and he, he writes yeah seems like that would make sense my iphone is the best media player in the world i would love to be able to download slash stream the show directly oh, from the oh, mobile oh, oh, oh. i would first off say your iphone is the most popular media player oh you like <laughs> you like something better you like the old zune well, I, I am certain that there are better players out there in the world. You know, I don't know. I, I, iPod's a pretty good media player. If you just look at it, a pure media player. You know, there's not. They have pretty decent functionality. Anyway, that we're getting aside from the point. But uh, debating the iPhone is for another day, sir. Yeah, he says I would love to be able to download slash stream the show directly from the mobile app. It would save me from having to download it through iTunes and sync it to my phone, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Also, it would keep me in the OX ecosystem while I'm listening to the show. That would make it easier for me to trade during the show. John, Tim, and Rob, please make this happen. 
So there you go, Tim. It's all on you. That was a great. I mean, uh, that that was a great email that. Uh, that, that we saw this morning um, and and yeah I mean we'd like that to happen too it seems to make sense we really thank him for the feedback um, and um, you know I again I, I want to say thank you and you know we're trying we're trying to best the best we can to make that happen yeah I've actually been floating this idea to uh, your biz dev guys over there for a long time since the yes. show started yes and I'm glad to hear that listeners are picking up the drum beat now because maybe they will respond a little quicker when they hear the listeners pushing I agree. this idea because it makes sense yeah. you know you're in the app anyway and then why mm -hmm. not keep them in there and let them listen and then trade and do other things while they're in the app it just makes a heck of a lot of sense to me, but hey, what do I know? I only produce a series of of audio content on a regular basis for a living. But um, but yeah, that was great. I mean, we really thank him very much for for listening, and we thank him for the comments, and we thank him for the good idea. Um, you know, and again, most listeners, I mean, you know, stuff like this is really what helps out. I mean, it really sort of seeps through the office here and and says, hey, you know, we've got people who want this. We want. I mean, they want that. Um, so, uh, you know, hopefully that e that that particular comment can make it happen even quicker. Yeah, well, good good on you, sir, Mr. Option Guy, for hopefully getting that ball rolling. And we'll we'll put the responsibility on Tim to make sure it happens. He is, <laughs> he is responsible now. So if, yeah, if it doesn't happen, right address your email to tnavabi at optionsexpress.com. But <laughs> <laughs> all right. And then closing out the old mailbag, we have a question concerning everyone's favorite IPO from last week. Was it last week? It seems like it's been longer, but yeah. it was just last week. Uh, this is from Delta Trader in our forum. He writes, hey, option block all-star panel. Since everyone is obsessed with LNKD these days, how about some options trading tips for those interested in the options? Thank you. And of course, we did discuss LNKD last week, but the options weren't live at the time, so we couldn't really look and uh, discuss the options in, in any real detail. Of course, we've had a whole whopping three trading days or so <laughs> for these options. They went live on Friday and I think my first surprise is that they didn't list with any weeklies in this. This seems to be a name that's tailor-made for weekly action, and yet uh, <laughs> they've got nothing in the weeklies. So that's a, uh, that's a huge strike against it from the beginning, if you're asking me. All you primo sellers can't dive into the weeklies and then blow out promptly. But, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, actually, if, I don't know, Mark, if you had a chance to take a look at this or it's too saw or Tim. Yeah, I have. I have. But uh, I was actually surprised looking at, playing around with it a little bit today that, uh, you know, the vol is relatively high. You're talking, you know, 80 plus in the front month at the money vol. Vol's and, too high. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but actually, I, I was actually thinking it might, it might creep higher given the range we've seen in this name over the past, you know, week or so. Obviously, it's been a, you know, 40 odd panels. I mean, it's a serious yeah. mover. So an, an 80 vol at the money straddle trading 10 at 11, that's not unreasonable for a name right. like this. Well, you know, if you look at the movement since it kind of opened, it's, it, you know, it did have a couple of down 6% days right in a row, though until today um you know one of the interesting things is that the is the conversion reversal market is has yes. fallen when the when the stock first opened you had to pay a negative rate of i i want to say 53 percent a year to be short the stock um and that has since shrunk down to about 15 percent. so the stock's a lot easier to borrow now um so those of you looking to get in on, on something LinkedIn and get short, uh, puts are a lot more reasonable than they were. Uh, yeah, I expected to come here seeing these things jacked, you know, they, Well, they were insane. They were insane on Friday. They were just nuts. Um, and the trade of the year was the jelly roll. If you, if you sold the June and bought the July, you made a blasted killing. Um, because the June has just gotten crushed, so that was a that was a nice trade that that type of jelly roll. Yeah, nice Those of you who don't know what a jelly roll is, it is a breakfast treat that Mark Longo eats several of every morning. <laughs> Tasty and delicious. You know that's that's what the children used to call the rolls back when we were on the floor. The men called them rolls. The yes. uh, the little little bitty children called them jelly rolls. But yeah, speaking of rolls, there isn't much in the way of. I thought there'd be some good time spread action you could do between June and July as well, but not. Mm -hmm. You said June's been crushed. They're pretty much. It's pretty much in line with July. July. Now. July is the sale, actually. When I last time I looked, give me a second here. Uh, let me double check. Uh, no, it, things have kind of popped back in a line, actually. Yeah, they're pretty much in in sync now. June and July. Not much. Yeah, although, to do there. 
Yeah, uh, if I was going to sell anything, I mean, July is definitely pricey relative. The, the time spread that is there might be the um, the AUG July. That actually might be a spread. Um, if you want, uh, you know, if you were going to sell something, sell the July and buy the August. That seems like a cheap. If you were going to buy a time spread, uh, or if you were going to sell a time spread, excuse me, I'd buy the August and sell the September. August, I think, in relative terms, is the cheapest month. Looking at the, you know, we talked here, you know, the at the money straddle in July and both June and July are trading around an 80 vol. Expensive, but not inordinately expensive. Not that I would want to run in and, and load up on premium at these levels here in LNKD. At the flip side, I wouldn't want to be massive premium seller out here as well, especially at those levels. I think they could be a little higher. And so, but if you start drifting down the strike chart, you see some commensurately more rewarding premium levels. Yeah. It's funny, I was I was chatting with someone the other day, and I've heard this from a number of people lamenting the crappy job that the iBankers did, A, on the IPO, and B, the fact that they didn't have a chance to get in at the IPO of $45. It gapped up, opened at 80 and went straight up north from there. So if you're looking right now in the July, you know, in that July 50 range of that strike, you're talking a 95 vol for those puts. You can get in for roughly a dollar on those and 85, 90 cents. That's you, a good sale. You could work your 45, your near 45 limit order right there yep. and then get paid for doing it. You're probably not going to reach those levels again, but if you do, hey, there you go. You just bought the IPO price or roughly about it. And if not, yeah. you pocketed a decent chunk of change for the privilege of working that limit order. So that one seemed to ha catch my attention. You can work it a number of different ways, 50, 47, half, put spread, and you could you could pair it off if you're worried about serious downside in LNKD. But regardless, that's a good way to manufacture your own quasi-IPO bid. That's my tip of the day for LNKD. Tim, you, before we close out, have you seen any uh, calls or a lot of action for LNKD over the past few days? Not a bit. None. Really? Given all the uh, media love yeah. for this one? Yeah. So it's uh, not it, the new Netscape then? No. Everyone just <laughs> everyone just asks, you know, do you have stock to short? Do you have stock to short? Do you have stock to short? No, no, no. Well, and, and for those of you wondering what, how the iBankers screwed up, what Tim Navabi just explained is exactly why – how the iBanker screwed up. Everybody wants to short the, the bejesus out of this thing. Well, they're happy. They got, their, yeah. they got their piece of the sale. They got their clients in at 45, who then gapped up to 80 in the opening print. So their, their big clients are happy. So they did their job for their clients. Whether they did their job for uh, LNKD is dubious. But the iBankers have dual masters on these deals, you know? Right. Yeah, I think they did a great job. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, you know, I, 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 yeah, you're you're right. They did a terrible job, but at the same time, I did, you know, there's some good salesmen out there, and you know, they, they got it done. Before we go, Mr. Tussaud, have you had a chance to look around at LNKD at all? Yeah, I kind of like what you were saying in terms of if you want to buy the stock at that low level, it's not a bad spot for uh, something along those lines. But uh, typically, we stay away from IPOs. Uh, and, and until the day that uh, the Options Insider goes public, we're probably not going to get into IPOs anytime soon. Filed our uh, S1 yesterday, sir, so we are coming. We, oh, ex we expect it to go know. anywhere in the 6 to $8 billion range, but we'll let you know. Since we, right, since we actually right. make some money, we may actually go higher. I don't know. Well, that's kind of an oddity for companies these days. An online company that I'm has not, revenue. I'm not, sure you're I'm not sure you're qualified to be a publicly traded <laughs> company. Well, Mark, I didn't know you were evil. Didn't you know that making money is evil? Well, that that, <laughs> that goes down a whole nother road. <laughs> All right. And with that note of silliness, we're going to close out the old listener mailbag for this week and roll into a quick Around the Block. Around the Block. And welcome to Around the Block. This is where we highlight what's on our horizons for the next few sessions. And as we all alluded to earlier in the trading block, the big number on everyone's mind tomorrow are the non-farms and what we're going to see coming out of those numbers tomorrow. And given what we saw yesterday and the negative uh, surprises we saw there, I don't think anyone's expecting too bullish of a number tomorrow. Mark, uh, Sir Sebastian, what's your, what's your point on this tomorrow? I like getting your number. I, yeah, I, I don't know if it was okay. last month or the, the month before that. That uh, you like seeing how many hundreds of thousands he's uh, he's off by. It's always very fun. We should have an no, over under for Sebastian. Not at all. <laughs> yeah, the Sebastian no. index. Um, I'm just curious. Yeah, what are you looking at? What well, do you I think? Mean, we're going to see SPI, the Sebastian payroll index. 
I, I yeah, no kidding. I, I, I really don't like it. I, I think I think it mix. I think we miss uh, and miss badly. Governments are laying off more than people realize, and add that to private growth not not adding. I think you're going to see right now is where all those government jobs are kind of going away. And so I think that non-farm number comes in uh, real light, real light. Um, you know, what? what is projected tomorrow? Mark? 169. 169. If we break six figures, I'll be surprised. That light. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I'm interested in seeing in how much of the – I'm more interested in how much of the miss is priced in than I am in – how whether they miss or not because they're sure. gonna all right sure there are a lot of lazy analysts that uh don't update their numbers anyway so yeah i, I if i had a bet i'd, I'd put it in in between 75 and 100 thousand. and there goes 1300 in the s&p yeah, yeah. <laughs> i don't know I, you know mark i don't know if that's true because i think you know i think 100 no 75 yes so um, I don't know. We, we've seen worse news before that hasn't derailed this market. So why should yeah. this be any different? Exactly. If I, if it, well, you know, this time, I don't think a lot of people now that QE2 is officially ending and there's nothing else kind of coming. I think that there's a, what they were calling the Bernanke put. I think it's still there, but I'm not sure for how much longer or, or how much harder. So I'm certainly not, uh, I'm really not in love with what I'm seeing. So, I am uh, just an FYI. I actually dumped all of my short VXX position yesterday, so that's mm-hmm. how little I believe in the market. Putting your money where your mouth is. So, listener Sebastian says, "Go long upside in the S and P. You'll yeah. thank him for it." <laughs> 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 all right, and with that, we're going to close out the old around the block, and that's also going to do it. For this episode of the Option Block, I want to thank all of the usual cast of characters, our rogues gallery, if you will, for joining me on the show today. And starting off with you, Uncle Mike, what do you have in store for us over at KnowYourOptionsInc.com? Well, for those of you listeners on our mailing list, it's uh, it's going to be one-on-one webinar season again at Know Your Options. Uh, it's kind of like the McRib. We, we don't like to have it too often, but we like to offer it uh, every now and then. Uh, and that uh, if you're on our email list, and if you're not, feel free to go to our website at knowyouroptionsinc.com. Uh, what we are offering right now is a free one-on-one webinar with myself or one of our new staff members. And uh, it's, it's an Ask Me Anything webinar, basically, in that if you have a question about a strategy that you want to learn about, that you want to know about, uh, we got a lot of experience in our office. Uh, we have uh, for, a lot of former floor traders. We have uh, everything from uh, stock people to commodity people. We have one guy in our office that trades futures that he's been in the business so long. When he first started, they were called pasts. Uh, so with oh. that in mind, yeah, I've been waiting to use that one. Uh, so with that in mind, feel free to go to our website and get on our email list. Also, uh, we're getting back into our weekly Sunday night webinars again for the month of June. This Sunday night, uh, we'll be talking about beginning options, fresh market, fresh attitude, and uh, just a very basic beginner course. What is a call? What is a put? So if you've never um, been to any class like that before, you're brand new to this business, stop on by. We'd love to have you. Listeners, that is a great deal one-on-one with Uncle Mike, the man himself. If you're not on that email list, then you should definitely take take I him up. I want my one-on-one with that me and kid. That kid, <laughs> that kid has his stuff together. You got to go with Uncle Mike. So surf on over to Know Your Options Inc. and get while the getting's good and get your one-on-one webinar because these these go pretty quick. If I'm not mistaken, Uncle Mike. That is correct. The man's time is limited, so uh, jump in and get them now. And then, Mr. Navabi, what is going on in the land of Options Express, aside from the fact that you're going to add the uh, streaming of audio in the app tomorrow? Mm -hmm. You know, there's free donuts at Krispy Kreme tomorrow. Uh, Not free donuts, sorry. Free donut. Uh, Anyways, um, (laughs) there are a couple webinars. 
that we have going on. You know, there's one tonight, for example, it all comes back to commodities, strategies, and limited risk tactics. Uh, that's at 9 o'clock Eastern. Um, <clears throat> we have some uh, other webinars like uh, on the 5th of June, Beginning Options, Fresh Market, Fresh Attitude. Um, and believe it or not, that's with Mr. Mike Tussaud. Um, then on I like the that 6th, guy. Yeah, he's a good guy. He's good at webinars. And then we've also got um, some of the other things here. Um, trading the VIX uh, session with Russell Rhodes. That is on the 8th, and that's at 2 o'clock Eastern. I know that. I did, a, I did a class with Russell Rhodes. That guy is – he is one of the – you know, two or three people that uh, understand the VIX better than I do that are in the education world. <laughs> yeah. Isn't, didn't he All die right. on the Ozzy Osbourne tour back in like the eighties? That guy. <laughs> Russell Rose. Randy Rose. <laughs> 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 all right. And with There's that, all those ants. Yeah. With that eighties <laughs> reference in place, we have to go to none other than Mark Eighties reference Sebastian. What is going on over at optionpit.com, sir? Oh, all sorts of things. It's just uh we're a booming and bustling. We actually are just introducing a new program, Mark. Uh we call it the Option Pit Lifeboat. And it's for you know, I keep running into these people that are like, uh, oh, I paid nine, nine, ten, fifteen, twenty five thousand dollars and got completely ripped off by so and so mentoring program. Uh, sound familiar, Mark? Indeed. Yeah, there are a lot of people out there out out there looking to rip people off. It's incredible. Um, the option pit life, yeah, no, uh, the option pit lifeboat, uh, is a program designed for. Graduates of inferior programs that have a base of knowledge, hopefully the program at least gives you that, that need, you know, a few sessions with me and uh, a lot of access to the pit reports and a lot of what I'm talking about. And it, it's really specially designed for uh, graduates of other programs that need help. Uh, you, For more information on it, you can uh, email me, uh, mark at optionpit.com, or you can... Uh, call me we haven't posted on the website but uh it's it's really a neat neat little program and it's true that you will indeed refund all of their lost fees to the other uh shady educators that's correct well no i well i'm fully guaranteeing they're going to make all of what they pay back and more and more on top of that in the first month of trading oh. by placing one tiny little ad <laughs> in one say. newspaper <laughs> Classified ads. That's where it all comes back to. <laughs> <laughs> no, obviously. No, I, you know, anybody that's willing to guarantee a return is somebody you should not work with. Sans a, a treasury. Wise words to live by. And listeners, you should also swing by. If you are not an OX customer, you should be sure to swing by our landing page there. Good old options express dot com slash OX Radio, our announcer, mentions it at the intro and outro of the show, but I thought I would throw it in there again because we do want to get uh, more people coming over to OX and checking them out. And if you've been listening to the show for a while and you've heard all the different features that Rob and Tim and uh, John and indeed Uncle Mike have highlighted and they pique your curiosity, then by all means, surf over to that page and try it out. We've got a deal there for you too kick the tires, so to speak, or you can try out the old paper trading and just uh, and not risk a penny and see if the tools are for you. And that's going to do it for this episode of the Option Block. Oh, before we go, I should mention we do indeed have the live event coming up on July 21st, so mark your calendars, and if you're going to be in the Chicago area, by all means, swing by and have a beverage with us and also maybe ask a question or two at our live taping of the show. You might win some fabulous prizes. <laughs> and then, of course, you can surf on over. If you have questions or comments for us, surf on over to theoptionsinsider.com slash forum and leave your questions there in the option block forum and thanks again for listening and downloading and streaming and subscribing to this show and we'll see you all next time right here on the option block 
The Option Block is sponsored by Options Express. When a broker emerges to lead an industry like Options Express, it's only natural to want to join them. Options Express has excelled with powerful technology, an innovative platform, and exceptional customer service. Others wonder what they'll do next. Stocks, options, and futures all in one account. Visit optionsexpress.com slash OX radio for your free account. Options and futures involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. Please read the characteristics and risk of standardized options and the risk disclosure statement for futures and options, both available by calling 1-888-280-8020 or visiting www.optionsexpress.com and clicking on the risks and policies link. Options Express, Inc. makes no investment recommendations and does not provide financial, tax, or legal advice. The views and opinions expressed on the option block are not those of Options Express or the Options Insider Incorporated and are strictly provided for educational and informational purposes only. Any mention of specific stock options, futures, or other investment products is not intended to portray a recommendation to buy or sell a particular security. Options Express Incorporated is a member of FINRA, SIPC, and MFA. Become a part of the option block. Just visit www.theoptionsinsider.com slash forum to post a question for the hosts. You can also submit questions to twitter.com slash option block or leave a voicemail at 312-544-9356. Make it interesting and your question just might make it on the air. The options block is property of the Options Insider Incorporated. All rights reserved. Seating program was a presentation of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com/radio or search for Options Insider Radio in iTunes.